Ang kutyo. Ang sumulubreh ko kaham to, ay tamla ka ni tayo iti sa amnaka. Ay manukuraw iti ka chun tayo. Lam na sa pinya na may buto ka tang sumulo ni daw ni po. Sa 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 Lúc này mình mong nông cho người dây ở vấy tổng chơi lúc này Yes, thank you, President. Mr. Hedder, the President has asked me to mention a couple of matters to you. First of all, the evidence before this tribunal has certain rules that have already been uh, uh, ruled upon, uh, and that includes um, that we don't look at the investigation. So if this matter comes up again, uh, uh, the chamber asks you not to stray into the area of the investigation. Uh, secondly, it would be greatly appreciated because of time constraints if you could compress your answers. Uh, and um, uh, we all know that undoubtedly you have a great deal of information, but please listen to the prosecutor and keep your answers as brief as possible. Uh, and thirdly, earlier this afternoon, the prosecutor uh, asked you to write down the name of an interviewee, which you did. Uh, the President has now asked me to uh, ask you to state the name of that person uh, publicly because he does not have a pseudonym assigned by the court, uh, and therefore there, it is quite proper for that person's name to be mentioned in open court. President, thank you. Thank you. Oui, je ne veux pas confisquer le, le, le micro, simplement une clarification, puisque tant ce matin que cet après-midi, lorsque vous avez été interrogé sur euh, certaines sources euh, mentionnées dans votre livre, il a été question d'un livre écrit par In Sophie. Et je voulais savoir si euh, vous avez décrit ce, ce document comme étant un document dactylographié qui était écrit en français. Et je voudrais savoir si le titre suivant vous dit quelque chose. Euh, que s'en pan a grandi et réel. Une note biographique par Insofip. Est-ce que c'est le document auquel vous faisiez référence title that was at the top of the typescript. Peut-être pourriez-vous nous le confirmer d'ici demain, et si c'est le cas, je, je précise à l'intention des parties pour que ceci soit noté sur le, le punitif, sur les, les, les records que le document en question a été versé au débat et c'est une décision de la Chambre qui figure à la référence E236-4-2. Donc c'est un document qui devrait très prochainement recevoir un numéro en E3. Mr. Hedder, can you read the name, please? Uh, the name is Dao Som Ol. Dao Som Ol. 
And can you read the document number if there so is no, one? I, don't, I can't remember no, if, it, been, if you have the E number on that document or D number. It's got a D number on the document. It's got a D number. And the D number is D210 stroke 10. Thank you. Can I collect that back just so that it's kept? Now, Mr. Heder Udong, 1974. Is this the sequence of events that the Khmer Republic forces were in control of the town? The Khmer Rouge come in in what you described as an attack. You mentioned evacuation. And on the day you went, the Khmer Republic were back in the town. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Can you help us on how long the attack was on Udong by the Khmer Rouge? Days, hours? My recollection is that it was over a 24, 36 hour period. And how long were the Khmer Rouge in control of the Khmer Rouge? Again, my, my recollection is, is, is a day or so, but I, I'm frankly not absolutely sure. In terms of executions, you mentioned the Buddhist nuns, but you used this phrase, other categories. Now, can you help on your observations or your interviews about other categories? Okay, so thank you. Uh, again, my vague recollection is there was talk about executions of military personnel, civil servants, uh, and then there was the specific mention of the nuns, and I was then taken or, or went to see the bodies of the nuns. Civil servants and soldiers of, of who? Uh, Khmer Republic civil servants and Khmer Republic military personnel. Now, from your observations, from the interviews that you conducted, or from any other direct sources, without speculating, did you receive any other information about what had precipitated the evacuation? Humanitarian crisis, bombing, anything of that nature? I don't recall any explanation as, for, as to why the evacuation had been carried out. out. Same question in respect of sources. But in the period from 1971 to 1975, did you Obtain information about any other evacuation in any other area of the country apart from what you've mentioned about Udong. Can you tell me why? Um, yes, I did do some interviewing after the partial occupation by Khmer Rouge forces of Kampong Cham, provincial town, uh, during which, according to what I recall of the interviews, I was told people were evacuated again to the west, um, 
and some people were killed on the spot before the being evacuated. The rest of them before the Khmer Republic Marine Forces, if I remember correctly, came up and reasserted military control over the whole of the provincial town. I think that was September 73. If I recall correctly, oui, je voudrais former une objection parce que je trouve que nous sommes dans une situation un petit peu difficile. Le procureur, on le voit bien, pose des questions relative à des événements et la seule réponse que peut y apporter en toute bonne foi M. Eder, c'est de dire « Oui, effectivement, j'ai entendu parler de ces événements à travers des interviews. » Mais nous sommes ici dans une enceinte judiciaire. Nous avons des milliers de documents qui ont été déposés et qui ont été déclarés recevables par votre chambre. Euh, S'il existe des entretiens, euh, euh, eh bien, euh, à ce moment-là, et qu'ils font partie du corpus euh, de preuves euh, qui peut être examiné par votre chambre, eh bien, euh, ils seront examinés <coughs> ou pas mais euh, ils font partie du corpus de preuves. On nous dit que M. Eder vient déposer comme euh, témoin de la manière dont il a récolté des preuves pour le tribunal. Je veux bien que, effectivement, euh, la... la sa présence à Oudong puisse faire partie des investigations euh, et qu'elle soit utile à une description euh, des événements euh, sur, cet événement, sur, sur ce passage de l'histoire. En revanche, euh, quand on pose des questions générales aux témoins et que celui-ci ne peut y répondre qu'en disant bah « oui, j'ai eu des entretiens, oui, on m'a dit que, on m'a dit que, on m'a dit que euh, », nous sommes, je le répète, encore une fois clairement dans une sorte euh, d'interrogatoire euh, d'experts, de sachants, de personnes dont euh, le procureur considère qu'il est particulièrement euh, compétent pour venir euh, nous décrire sans nous en donner des détails puisque à plusieurs reprises M. Eder a fait référence à des notes qu'il devrait consulter et ces notes euh, nous ne savons pas s'il les a avec lui ou si elles sont de, à son domicile ou ailleurs. Cela me rappelle un petit peu euh, la déposition de, de M. Chandler à cette barre qui lui aussi faisait référence à des notes potentielles qu'il avait dans sa chambre d'hôtel et qu'il euh, pouvait euh, éventuellement consulter le soir pour revenir le matin en nous donnant des informations. Mais M. Euh, M. Chandler a comparu en qualité d'expert. M. Eder a refusé de comparaître en qualité d'expert. Il comparait en qualité de témoin. Et je trouve que nous sommes en train de passer, encore une fois, de questions qui ne sont plus celles qui seraient posées à un témoin, mais qui sont des questions posées à un expert dont on estime que... Il est particulièrement compétent euh, et crédible pour euh, décrire des choses euh, qu'il a appris par lui dire uniquement et sans donner de référence. C'est la raison pour laquelle je me pose à la question qui vient d'être posée. Memorandum, email, 3rd of July, Mr. Roberts, all parties. Quote, the questions shall be directed primarily to evidence the witness gathered either during the interviews he conducted, etc. These questions are about the interviews he conducted. The answers are about 
All these submissions go to weight, not admissibility. Restrained my questioning to Mr. Hedder's direct knowledge, interviews undertaken, and I please proceed. ยุลคืนท่าได้จมตัวนั่งสมอางให้ได้จมตัวระบบมีทีวีอันตรายจิตการเปิดได้ยุลคือสมพรจมพูระเบียบสมตั้งสมนูระบบดำนางทรัพย
Can I hand out copies of the indexes so that everyone knows where I'm going with my questioning, what the files contain, and the purpose is to assist Mr. Heather by handling the materials so that I don't have asking for documents and getting it back and changing my files. I hope it will assist your understanding of his evidence to have these to hand. Can I please just repeat? Thank you. 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 Mr. President, given that everyone now has the indexes, can I please now provide the lever arch files to Mr. Hedder? Mr. Header, three additional files. The file on the spine of each file has a number, two, three, and four. Can I ask you please to turn to file two, tab seven. Document number D210-10. This is now, as far as you're concerned, the statement of the gentleman whose name you gave in, to the court. I'd like you please to turn to it. Easiest for you, page six of the statement. English ERN 0043-6882. French 0046-3018. So this is your interview with this gentleman. Question at the top of the page. But the place you previously stayed belonged to the East Zone. And I wonder if this can be displayed, please, this document. And the problem started since around 73. 
and oh, later on you understood that there might be problems within the leadership of the East Zone. Answer from the interview is, in general, starting from 1973 onward, I started to be suspicious about them because I saw their activities in 73 and 74. They purged the internal cadres and regular cadres accusing them of being corrupted and wild. At that time, there were just two main accusations, one of which was the immoral act of womanizing, and the second one was the internal enemy borrowing from within. Can you confirm that that is what you were told in this interview? Um. Yes. And just to remind us, this interview held, this interviewee held what position in what sector or zone? Okay. He was a. He moved around various. Positions within the East um, and was in several sectors that um, ended up as being Secretary of Sitor Kandal District uh, of Sector 22. Right, thank you. I want to move on to a topic now of the Vietnamese and the Khmer Unfortunately, unfortunately, the first question I have is on this same witness thing. Can you turn back on page to page 5 in Vichy RN 0039211312 Question just year 1973 Answer Chlai Yes since year 73 Because at that time I saw the situation was changed The first main problem was when they expelled the Vietnamese They expelled the Vietnamese forces from the Cambodia-Vietnam borders and from our territory in 73, that was around Ju July or August. I do not recall which month exactly. That was the first event, and the second event began in 1973. It was the purge and arrest of the cadres from the North Zone who had been trained in the North Vietnam in Hanoi. They started to arrest them step by step. Can you confirm that that was what was said to you in this uh, Yes, except for the fact that I think there is a slight mistake in the translation um, where the translation reads North Zone as if it refers to the North Zone of the, uh, of in the Khmer Rouge administrative system. It's actually referring to the northern half of Vietnam. Otherwise, fine. Next, please. File. We're going on to another statement now. File 2, tab 1. E number. E3. First page. So this is at your index 1. File 
this is E3 slash 1714 and can this be displayed please the heading of the document interviews with Cambodian refugees at the Thai Cambodia border February March 1980 interviewers Masato Matsushita and Stephen R. Hedder, graduate student, Cornell University. And you've explained already the background to this, so can I please take you to page 20, and that's using the page of numbers shown in the bottom of the document. They're, they're a bit indistinct. Page 20, English ARN 0017-0071-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-
English ERN ប្រំបីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីបំពីប
ហើយគ្រូសួរថាតើលោកបានសរសេរទៅខ្លួនឯងឬក៏លោកបានលឺពីគេបែបនេះហើយ on the description of the person who obviously got man from Tambon 13 Takao in the west, southwest of the Republic of Can you remember anything else about the position of this person or their state? No. I have a vague recollection of the guy Within the same body, so the same document, E3171. Can I now take you please to Page 54 for you. Indonesia RN March the 12th, 1980, the source, also known as Lorne, member of the Kampong Song City Standing Committee. Can you help us on what the Kampong Song City Standing Committee is a Um, yes, um, Kampong Saum was one of only two places in the CPK structure where they had a municipal committee, the other being Phnom Penh. So this was the, the party, the CPK leading committee for Kampong Saum City, of which Loin was one of the members. Your page 57. If we had captured Phnom Penh in 1974, it would also have been an evacuation. This had been a long-standing plan. Slogan was dry up Rung the people from the enemy. Is this an accurate recording Ta of what you were told? Tra tra lok te, lok sa yes. Lai, bad. In the course of all the direct Nung interviews you have had with personnel relating to the democratic Kampuchea period, has any other witness or any other document that you can recall mentioned the phrase dry up the people from the enemy? Um, yes, many, many. many. 
<cười> Sao thích mà tôi lời tốt Là thông chí lục Nhưng mình bị bây giờ cô bế Mình bị cô bế xong ổ con lục thiên Cả xong ổ bấm lư sạc đi nhá bàn xù Sự thật ta miền xạ xây nạp xây tiết ta xạ xây Trên đây chú bác rư cò Xạ xây chìa xạ xây khơi Tổn phân đếch để bàn phạm mò lục xạ xây as any other let's break it down Firstly, has any other individual that you have interviewed directly used the phrase dry up the people from the enemy uh, yes yes can you give us some indication, the old individual, a few individuals, just paint the picture? I mean, here I have to generalize. Um, this particular phrase has been mentioned to me by many people over many years. Um, if I had to guess how many we're talking dozens um, and certainly going right back indeed to the pre-April 1975 period when I was in Phnom Penh, I'd already heard this phrase. And I'll add, since you already asked the question, that it also frequently appeared in public broadcasts. Um, in, in the pre-April 75 period, the various radio stations that were directly or indirectly under the control of the Khmer Rouge used this phrase in their broadcast. And if one were to comb through the FIBIS, the FBIS, for the pre-April 75 period, I'm sure you would find numerous references to it. Thank you. The next page of this individual that you interviewed is page 58 for you, English RN 0070, after the failure of early 1974 offensive, there were study sessions. In the end of 1974, there were generalized study sessions. The purpose was the preparation for the attack in 1979. Is this an accurate recording? Of what we were told. Yes. I'd like you next within your file to go to tab two. This is your interview with Ian Sari, 17th of December 1996, E number, E3 slash 89. Can you please turn to page 5 of this document, English ERN, 0041-76-03, 0033-26. I say again, French 0033 You're discussing the September 1978 reply Can this be shown, please? No, that matter was not discussed at that point. The matter of the evacuation from Phnom Penh had been previously decided. That's according to what I was told. You, February 1975, 
I raised this matter with Paul Bond in 1974, asking what preparations had been made for when we won Phnom Penh. We discussed the population at that time. You, on that, pardon me, where did you meet him? Ying Sari. I met him near Phnom Penh. I had returned from Beijing. I came back in 73 and met the prince in Hanoi. I went to Beijing and came back in 74. You, when you led the economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing, Ying Sari, yes, I returned. I returned. I returned, and then we discussed what we should do when we won, and what preparations should be made. This was the view of His Excellency Zhou Enlai. He had asked me what plans we had after we won. I was in a difficult spot. I did not dare respond at all at the time. I said that I did not yet have any clear knowledge and he would have to wait until I could ask inside Cambodia. When I did ask inside the country, I did not dare ask about army matters. But I did ask what solution there would be to the problem of the people, what solution there would be to the problem of the three million people in Phnom Penh. Pol Pot replied to me, that they already had all the experience they needed and that I should not concern myself with this and should instead concern myself with my duties abroad. I then said that I had been specifically asked by the Chinese leadership about this problem. He said that it was a very easy matter to resolve and that our Chinese comrades had nothing to worry about because we Khmer had clear-cut notions in this regard. Having been able to solve the problem in Stung Tren and Krache provinces, so the solution to the problem was to evacuate. That was the only way to solve the problem. I responded by asking whether this meant a total evacuation or what. And he said to wait and see what the concrete situation would be at the time. Nevertheless, the term evacuation was already being used in 1974. Is this an accurate recording of what you were told? Now just pausing here about the interview with him, can you just Give us a flavour of how this interview was set up, what sort of um, efforts you needed to go to to uh, organise the interview, a little bit of background, please. Please. Yeah, this happened um, after um, the Yamsuri was officially presented as having led a breakaway of Khmer Rouge troops uh, to join the, the government. Um, and I'd had some contact with Suri by telephone at various points in time, even before that. Um, and then in December, two, December 96, I, went, I attended an academic conference in Australia. And while I was in Australia, I decided I would try and see Suri on my way back to Europe. So I called him Australia and said, could I interview you? And he said, 
Telephone contact with him again, and he explained that the Thai authorities weren't going to allow me to cross into Pailin, so therefore he would have to come to see me, and would I please wait for him in a certain hotel? Um, and I proceeded to wait for him in that hotel until he appeared. Then we had a, a formal interview during which E. Chien, his aide de camp, de facto aide de camp, was mostly present, after which we had a meal and then he returned to Pai Lin. Thank you. We can see from the front of the document, E3-89, transcript from the audio tape. So uh, handheld dictaphone, old-fashioned tape recorder, can you help? Uh, I was a little tape cassette machine that the standard kind of journalist used in, in, in those days. I think there were three cassettes. Now, can you just help us on, I'm back on page 5 for you, which is the part I've quoted. It's the bit to try and give some timings to what Ying Sri, Ying Sri, you asked him. Well, let me break it down. He said I went to Beijing and came back in 74. You asked when you led the economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing, and he said yes. Now, can you help us on uh, what month we are in 1974 for when Ying Sri comes back from the uh, economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing? Uh, that's right. I'm guessing here, frankly. I think it's late 74, but I would have to check the files. Right, thank you. I'm moving now to a separate topic. It, it is the evacuation itself. Um, Mr. President, can I perhaps ask just to, to ask one, one part of one book, and then I, I'm conscious of the time. But I'd just like to at least get into the second subject with one question. Mr. Hedder, file two aside for a minute. Can you please pick up file four, which is on your seat? It's the bottom file on your seat. File three. File 4, Tab 1. Document E190.1.3.1. Title. Reassessing the role of senior leaders and local officials in democratic Cambodia crime, Cambodian accountability in comparative perspective. Can I please take you to page 6? The, the heading to this part was Rethinking the Dynamics of and Responsibility for DK Era Crimes. Quote, the problem is posed right from the start of CPK rule, notoriously marked by the coercive, violent and murderous evacuation, to use the CPK term, of the population of Phnom Penh and other towns and areas. 
previously governed by Marshal Lon Nol's Khmer Republic. The CPK leadership intended this mass deportation to abolish the urban-based feudalist bourgeois and petty bourgeois intellectual strata as classes by sending them to live under the political control of the toiling peasantry in the countryside and make them forever part, a part of a worker peasant class in formation which was henceforth to comprise 99% of the country's population. Footnote 16 references a notebook of the first rank, S, it says S2, I don't know if that's right, S2 interrogator Tong Song Kuen uh, alias yeah. Pong, in an entry Ong dated the 7th of December 1977, it says here from the archives of the Documentation Centre of Cambodia, hereafter DC Cam Collection, author's translation. Can you confirm that that was your source for this statement in your book? Yes. That, and, uh, it should, and it should be S21. Now that document, if anyone wants to follow, is D3 and 3, straight one point two five one. Just a little bit of information, this notebook of uh, Pong, a little bit more detail, not too much. Can you just describe, please? This was at a time before DC Cam had catalogued its materials. So this was a, a notebook with, in the handwriting of Bon, which was among the many documents that were then in DC Cam's uncatalogued possession. Thank you. Mr. President, I hope that's been covered. Can I please just make uh, this observation? The, the application made this morning uh, used up one hour of the prosecution's time. Can I please ask if that's borne in mind? Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Header. ແລະຄັ້ງພະພະຍາບັດບັດບັງຍະເປມີມາອົງກັບປະປຶກມີນີ້ <coughs> Mr. President, can I suggest that we keep them? Um, we, we've had them all day. We are going to effectively just store them overnight and then bring them back to court tomorrow if that meets with the court's satisfaction. បាទហើយយើងយកត្រឡប់ទៅវិញហើយពេលជួបគាត់យើងយកប្រជុំគាត់ <coughs> សាសីនិយមរដ្ឋសាស្ត្រទុកវិញហើយដល់ពេលដេញពិសាសនិយមដល់ទាំងថ្ងៃស្អែកសុំផ្ដល់ឲ្យគាត់ជាបន្តទ
นึ่งสัตว์ที่น่าจุนเรียบแล้วลูกสตีเฮดเดอร์การสลับตะเคียงกำบลุกในบรรทอนจอมในไลที่อังยิมได้หนึ่งบรรทอนทัวร์สามาการสลับตะเคียงกำบลุกในไงสายเทียดโดยเฉพาะอังยิมได้แล้วก็เชิญลูกมาบรรทอนสลับตะเคียงกำในไงสายเทียดได้หนึ่งจับดาวพิมองปรมบุตรประตูบรรทอนรัฐบาลตระการรวมรวมจมูกหนึ่งอังบรรทอนในอังกับพิมพ์กองเปียสะใส่หนึ่งเนี่ยยิมได้ขนมกาจุนลูกสตีเฮดเดอร์สลับตะเคียงที่กันไลเด็กก็ถนัดในวิ่งให้หนึ่งเอาเชิญก็ตลอดมุกันกันไลพอดตะเคียงกำในขนมกุฏิสามนาการในวิ่งในประเทศไทยในบริเวณมองปรมบุตรให้ประกอบเอาไอ้อนุเรียมันที่คงแข็งนองพลุนจุนจับจับตั้งปีรูปคือลูกนุ่นชีนหนึ่งลูกเคสัมพอนตลอดตัวกันมันที่คงแข็งในอบตะโกเป็นเจ้าหนึ่งประกอบไอ้นองพลุนก็ตลอดมาจูรวมสามนาคาอันนี้เว้นอย่างในทางไอ้ไอ้บันมุนมองประมุนปรึกได้ไล่ลูกนุ่นชีประกอบไอ้นองพลุนมาในตะมันตุบคุมครูนขังกล้อมได้เรียบจอมเนื้อกอสอตัวสำหรับกอดไอ้จูรวมหนึ่งตามร้านกันจำนาคาสามนาคาปีจำไงสำหรับเจ้าสมเจริญกล่าวเชิง